So some people have asked me to do a video on homeopathy for a while, and I haven't talked about it simply due to the fact that many other YouTubers have already covered it. Plus, there really isn't too much to say about it. It's just an alternative medicine that really has no effect, and some people may think it does due to the placebo effect. But let's take a quick look at a video I found, and then towards the end I'll talk about something juicier. If I have to say something to the critics, I can only tell them that I have such grateful patients that come every single day to my practice. I mean, if you have patients who come back every day, they're not really getting better, right? If your homeopathy treatment is working on them, why would they come back every single day? I don't know, just food for thought. I have seen children who get cough and cold every two weeks they take antibiotics. What in the world? Who the fuck is giving antibiotics to kids with colds? You don't treat viral infections with antibiotics. To all you pieces of shit at home watching this, don't take antibiotics when you have a cold, okay? Save that for when you have a bacterial infection. And then after six months, one year, two years of homeopathy, they just come with so much gratitude. They say now everything is all right. Not only my complaint, but I feel better as a person. My energy has come back. What is this? Homeopathy can not only cure your illness, but can also give you everlasting energy and overall well-being? Does it now somehow prevent you from getting diseases? What's the story here? How do you defend yourself from critics like me? So my suggestion to them, just try it. Yeah, let me just pull out my money and my time to go try out homeopathy instead of seeking actual medical care. Do not bother about whether homeopathy is logical, whether it is within the tenets of science as we know it today, whether it is making sense or no sense, simply watch the results. You're essentially just promoting the ignorance is bliss idea, which I completely disagree with. You can't promote a type of treatment you claim can cure diseases and tell people not to think about the science behind it. Because these are people's lives we're dealing with here. In medicine, things have to be shown to be effective, and they have to pass clinical trials before they can be accepted by the FDA and then released to the public. The guidelines are strict, and there's a reason they are this way. Imagine if someone came to you and said eating rocks can cure your heart disease. Then he says, don't think about how this can cure you, just do it and see the results for yourself. Of course, this would be deemed unacceptable since there's nothing about eating rocks that would help your heart condition. And because you cannot provide the scientific explanation, there's no reason to trust your treatment. Of course, that was an extreme analogy, but I think it applies quite accurately here. If you can tell us the exact mechanism on how homeopathy helps, then we'll gladly open our ears to listen. But if we were to hold you up to standard on how actual treatments get passed in the real world, we would also require clinical trials comparing groups of individuals using the treatment and a group using a placebo. But let's just start with the scientific mechanism of action for now. Have you got an explanation, or are you just going to keep citing anecdotes? Our founder Hahnemann, the one who discovered homeopathy, he wrote a book and the very first words of the book are as follows, homeopathy appeals to the proof of its action. Well, that's the same for any other types of potential treatments, except the difference is that those treatments pass tightly controlled clinical trials, while the only real basis homeopathy has are anecdotes, which to science is practically useless. And you know what? Scientists have actually already tested homeopathic treatments in trials. There's actually multiple of them, but I'll drop one of them as a link in the description below, if my future self remembers, that is. It's a systematic review of homeopathy. Pretty cool to check out. Spoiler alert, homeopathy is no different than a placebo. Everything comes later. All my explanation, all my theorizing, all my great ideas of this or that or this theory, that theory, no. Once you see its effect, then we will talk further. Why? Why does it have to be that case? Why don't you just tell us what the mechanism of action is, then we'll try it. Don't criticize it on the basis of this or that. What is science exactly? Science is not what you can understand. What? There are many, many things you can't understand. So science is not based upon what is understandable. Science is based upon what actually happens. Both of those are actually the results of science. Science is a method of obtaining truth. It is the most objective way we currently have when it comes to discovering truth about the universe. And through this method, we arrive at both what we can understand and what actually happens. These are not exclusive to each other. When new treatments are first proposed, they are hypothesized based on knowledge. Perhaps a new drug here should help inhibit the progression of certain diseases because maybe it inhibits this, promotes that, you get the idea. These are based on pre-existing knowledge, but won't be proven to be true unless demonstrated to be so. So unless the practice of homeopathy can undergo 
undergo the same rigorous testing, it'll remain a pseudoscience, especially when trials have actually demonstrated it not to work. It's based on experimentation and observation. Your explanation can follow later. That's a misrepresentation. Yes, yeah, sometimes clinical trials are conducted even before the actual mechanism is mapped out, like for example the ones on homeopathy, but they won't be marketed as an actual treatment until the trial gives positive results. What you're doing here is that you're already telling people it works and giving it to people as actual treatment instead of undergoing a clinical trial to test whether or not it works. So there are many things that happen which we don't understand today, but that doesn't dismiss it as a fact. Simply you don't understand it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. This concept should go. Okay, but it's not like we don't understand what homeopathy is. And for those of you guys who don't know, I'll give a brief rundown. Essentially, homeopathy is based on the belief that molecules that cause unfavorable symptoms in healthy people will actually treat or reverse those symptoms in sick people. So for example, giving someone caffeine would be a homeopathic treatment for people suffering from insomnia. Also, this is administered after that particular compound or molecule has been diluted over and over again, until the final solution doesn't even have a trace of that original molecule anymore. They argue that water has memory, so it remembers the compound that's supposed the basis of the treatment. Of course, that is just complete nonsense, since they have yet to explain why water would remember that particular molecule instead of the thousands and millions of different types of environments it has been in in the past. Not to mention that water memory would go against a lot of what we know about chemistry. Sounds a little far-fetched, don't you think? So yeah, it's not that we don't understand what homeopathy is and that it somehow works like what Newton experienced with gravity. It's that we do know what it is and we know it doesn't work. Look at it. See the patients healed by it. See the studies that have been done. And then let science try to explain it, try to come to a point where it can be understood. Yeah, let's move on. Nothing else to see here. So here comes the interesting part, and you're going to want to stick around for this. I'm going to talk a little on why alternative treatments seem to be effective. Why is it that so many people who are providers of alternative medicine are convinced that their procedure works? It comes down to a lot of factors, one being the placebo effect, which is the most dominant one. A patient thinking and believing the treatment works end up having that sort of effect on the body. And this is a psychological phenomenon that can make it difficult to distinguish what actually works and what is just an effect of the mind. I'm sure we're all familiar with the placebo effect, so I'm actually going to talk about a second factor that plays a small role in making providers of alternative medicine think their treatments work, and that is called regression towards the mean. This is a statistical phenomenon, and it states that when a value is first measured to be extreme, it will tend towards the mean on the second measurement. In other words, if you measure a value to be very, very high or very, very low compared to the average, the next measurement, and consecutive measurements after that, will more likely be closer to the average value. I know this sounds absurd and difficult to grasp right now, but keep listening and I'll explain it. When values are measured to be on the extreme ends of the spectrum, the chances of them returning to more normal values on the next measurement is simply more likely, and this applies mostly to things that have more to do with chance. Let me give an example to help you visualize this. Let's say there's a room full of however many people, let's say a thousand people. Every single one of these people will be flipping a coin exactly 100 times, and they will be required to record how many times they got heads. Now if you collect all the data from all the 1,000 people and average them out, you're probably going to get somewhere around 50 heads per 100 coin flips. Although the average is that, chances are you're going to get a few people in the extreme ends. Let's say one person got 80 heads out of 100, and someone else who got 20 heads out of 100. It could be on either ends of the extreme. Now if you took these people who scored on the extreme ends and asked them to do a second set of 100 coin flips, they are likely to get a score that is closer to the average of 50 heads on their second set. This is regression towards the mean, and it is a phenomenon observed for tests like these that have some degree of chance factor. Think of it this way, the extreme measurements were picked out due to them being extreme, and since coin flipping is pure chance based, they likely got extremes due to chance, so their second coin flips statistically speaking, should be closer to the mean than their original extreme score. Regression towards the mean applies to many real-world situations, such as sports. If you went bowling, for example, and usually score an average of 100 points, and one day you score 200 points, then the next time you go bowling after that, you'll likely get closer to your average compared to the 200-point game you had, but only if there was some degree of chance involved. Perhaps some days your wrist isn't as flexible. Perhaps some days the weight of the bowling ball affects your performance. Perhaps some days you were drunk. The more factors there are in here that is attributed to chance, the more likely you'll score closer to 100 on the game after the one you scored 200 points on. Of course, if every single factor that determines your points has to do with skill, then regression towards the mean would not apply. It only applies if there is some degree of chance involved, and applies more strongly the higher degree of chance. If not carefully considered, regression towards the mean can be a huge pitfall, so it's important to identify it. So what does this have to do with alternative medicine? See, regression towards the mean is something that can give you false conclusions in both the testing of alternative and actual medicine. Let's say a patient comes to you with high blood pressure. You measure him to 
to be 140 systolic and 90 diastolic millimeters of mercury. Now, this is quite extreme since the average is 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. You prescribe him a treatment that doesn't actually solve his blood pressure issue, but he takes it anyway. Let's just say you gave him a homeopathic treatment. The following day, he comes in to measure again, and voila, his blood pressure went down to 135 over 85, a whole 5 millimeters of mercury down from yesterday. But now we must think, was that really due to the medication you gave him? Blood pressure is determined by a number of factors, and there are many conditions that can give you high blood pressure. However, there is always going to be some shadow of luck involved. And like I mentioned earlier, if there is any degree of chance, regression towards the mean will apply. So in this case, assuming the placebo effect isn't a factor, the homeopathic medication gave to this patient actually didn't do anything, but rather you fell into a statistical pitfall. And this doesn't just apply to alternative medicine. When new proposed allopathic treatments are being tested for their effectiveness, this would also apply. So in that case, how can we ensure that regression towards the mean doesn't affect our results? That's very simple. All you have to do is conduct a double-blind experiment, have one group of patients receive the treatment and another receive the placebo. This is by far the best way to test if a new treatment is effective, because not only does it eliminate the placebo effect from our results, it also eliminates any influence from regression towards the mean. This is how actual new potential treatments are tested, something that alternative medicine proponents don't conduct. Rather, you hear people like this guy in the video claim that it works simply because he used it on patients and it seemed like it worked. Not only is this subject to the influence of placebo, they also have another obstacle, and that is regression towards the mean. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new today. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week.